Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a roundup of air guns and gadgets from the Great British Shooting Show, plus a review of the awesome little Air Arms S200. But before that, I make targeting some challenging pigeons in the woods. It's a windy afternoon, but that's not discouraging me from heading out with the air gun. Late winter is a great time for targeting avian pests, not least because the trees are still bare of foliage, which makes it a lot easier to spot your quarry. We're in the woods targeting pigeons today. Now, while I'd expect the bulk of the action this evening when they start flighting into roost, the birds are actually targeting a crop of kale out in the adjacent field. So I'm expecting them to flight back, flitting in and out throughout the afternoon as they come back to perch and sleep off that binge before they head out to feed again. Now, I could set up a hide and decoys out in the field, but that's much more hit and miss. I think our best chance today is to set up in the woods and ambush them as they flight back in. So I'm going to try and find somewhere to set up and hopefully we'll bag a few. Setting up in the right place takes some forethought. When pigeons are hitting neighbouring crops, trees along the woodland edge can often be productive as they are close to the birds' feeding grounds. Remember also that pigeons like to land and take off facing into the wind. Right, I think I'll set up here for starters. Now, it's always a bit of a compromise between cover and clear shots. But between this tree here, the ivy, and these fallen branches behind, I've got a fair bit of natural cover around me. And most importantly, I'm able to cover quite a few open trees because there's no point being set up underneath an area where the pigeons are really flooding in if you can't thread a clear shot through the twigs to get at them. Now, I'm not bothering to build a hide, I'm just relying on my camouflage gear because once the birds start flighting in, we'll get a bit more of a clue as to where the most productive area is. And if we need to move, we can do that quickly and easily. Now that I've chosen my spot, it's time to load up ready for action. So we're all set. All we need now is a few pigeons to start flighting into those treetops. It's a cold day today, so I've dressed for the occasion because the last thing I want to be doing is heading home early because I'm feeling the cold or missing shots because I'm shivering. So apart from my usual hat, I've got on a fleece neck snood, which I can also pull up over my face and use as a head net if I need to. I've got a nice thick warm neoprene gloves and on my feet, I've got on boots that have got a five millimeter neoprene lining that'll really keep out the cold. And it's amazing what a difference it makes just to be properly insulated around your head, neck, hands and feet. With the sun still high in the sky, it's going to be a while before the pigeons start flighting in for their evening roost. But I'm still hopeful that we'll get a few early arrivals swinging back in from that field of kale. A movement in the trees gives away the presence of a grey squirrel. But there are too many branches in the way for a shot, and this one's not hanging around. Well, that hoped for early action hasn't come. Maybe I should have gone to the trouble of building a hideout in the field, but uh, we've seen one or two birds moving, but not really in numbers. It's turning into a really cold evening, and my theory is now that the birds that are coming into roost later on, if we're gonna salvage anything, they're probably gonna go in deeper in the woods, where it's a bit more protected, a bit more low cover. So what I'm gonna do is up sticks, 
move on into there. Also, we've seen a couple of squirrels moving over that way, so might even get a chance at those. Let's give it a go. Right, well this looks a bit more like it. I can still get clear shots around here, but there are more thick patches of that low ivy that are just helping to block out that breeze a bit. Certainly, if I was a pigeon looking for somewhere to roost tonight, I'd rather be here where it's more sheltered than out on that exposed woodland edge. This area looks promising for the evening roost, but doesn't offer me as much cover as I'd have liked. I pull my camouflage neck snood up over my face to help keep any telltale patches of skin hidden. We got a few in now, but I just can't get a clear shot. I'm gonna I'm gonna bide my time and hopefully be able to get a pellet through to one of these. Several pigeons have pitched in, but the tangle of twigs is making it difficult to get a shot through to them, and the wind pushing through the treetops certainly isn't helping. I just can't get a clear shot, so I lower my gun and wait for a better opportunity. It looks like a shot is finally on, but the disturbance of a shooter and a cameraman is just too much for these birds to tolerate. Brilliant. We've had to be patient. There's been a few birds coming in, but they've been very obscured. I've had to leave shots. That one just about gave me enough clear view to get a kill shot through. Nice telling shots, dropped like a stone. Couldn't be happier. Right, I've loaded back up, but I'm not going to run and collect that one yet. Quite frankly, it dropped so cleanly, I know it was cleanly killed, and I don't want to make a commotion retrieving it when it looks like one or two birds might be floating in now. As the light starts to fade, the roosting action picks up, and I've soon got another pigeon in the crosshairs. Right, that makes it a brace. Had to be very patient there. We've had a few birds fly in and flit off while I've been crunching around trying to get clear shots at them because there's a lot of twigs in the way up there. With that one, I tried several angles, ended up settling for quite an uncomfortable shot, but managed to find a clear path through for the pellet and brought it down. It's down cleanly, so I'm not gonna run in, and I think it proves the importance of leaving that first one and not making the retrieve. Peace returned to the woods and the pigeons came back. With the wind ripping through the treetops, I'm having to pick my shots even more carefully. Okay, we've got, we've got another one in, a single bird. Brilliant, another clean kill. And it's not easy in this wind. That one was worth hanging around for. Right, we've been beaten by the light now and it's starting to rain, but we've had three birds and after such a tricky start, I'll settle for that. The FAC rated Mark IV has made a big difference today. In this blustery wind, that fast moving 2-2's cut through it and enabled me to take shots that I probably wouldn't have taken with the legal limit air gun. So in tricky conditions, 
we've managed to salvage something. I marked quite carefully where those three birds fell, so I'm going to head over now and pick them up before it's too dark to find them. Although it wasn't the busy afternoon's pigeon shooting I'd expected, I'm happy to have accounted for a trio of pigeons in these tricky conditions. I'll be back as soon as I can to have another go at the flock, but in the meantime, at least I'm going home with three plump birds for the pot. Well, targeting wood pigeons with the air gun is never easy, but at least we didn't go home empty handed. And now it's over to the air gun show news. This is the air gun show news brought to you by the air gun center. This episode, we report from the British shooting show in Stoneley. Visitors to the show were treated to a feast of new and exciting air gun gear. Here's just a few of the guns and gadgets that we reckon will make your air gun shooting even more enjoyable in 2015. The best inventions are usually the simplest, and that's certainly the case with this retrofit push button air bleed from Best Fittings. Easy to connect to your air cylinder valve or charging head, this nifty add-on replaces a conventional screw bleed to provide a reliable seal with a fast and simple air release at the push of a button. Uh, to fit it we simply unscrew this from the cylinder valve or the charging head and then this unit will screw straight back in the existing position and give you a thumb push, uh, easy action bleed valve uh, to resolve all of those issues that you know that you've got. The popular Crosman Phantom from ASI has been given a revamp and is now available in Mark II guise. The hard-hitting 2.2 calibre Springer now features an ambidextrous synthetic stock. The Mark I, as we all know, has had a tremendous success over the last few years. We've been badgering Crosman to bring it up to date and add a few very exciting features. So, of course, the first one to mention, fully shrouded barrel, produces a very quiet whisper when you fire it. With a nice chunky forend, with some grippy, soft feel, a more sophisticated and elaborate scope. This is a 3 to 9 by 40 center point with adjustable objective. If you're into after dark hunting, the new Tracer Lead Ray F400 range of tactical flashlights is well worth a look. Uh, the system allows you to focus the system from spot to flood, okay, and it will allow a 300 meter uh, range on this. The system itself comes with a snoot, which will reduce barrel glare. That comes within the, the kit itself. It's available in white, which is a 300 meter throw. Uh, we've got them in green, which is a 250 meter, and also available in red, which is 150 meter. Staying with the night hunting theme, the arrival of the eagerly awaited Atom Night Vision unit from Nightmaster is now imminent. This is the new Atom and it should be released very soon and it converts any day scope into a night scope. Uh, it retails at $499.95. The digital side wheel from Rowan Engineering could be the next must have for serious target shooters. This clever gadget reads your scope side wheel to give a digital reading with target range and number of turret clicks required. We've got a wheel which is set up and calibrated to my scope. The scope is set to zero. As you move your wheel, it will change the amount of yards, give you your elevation. Also on this screen, I have got it set up as 120 seconds countdown timer. Also within this DSW, as you're moving your gun in an inclined or declined, it will automatically calculate the amount of compensate, compensation you have to give. Gas ram powered air guns have never been more affordable and the new Apex Predator from Air Force One gives even more bang for your buck. This full powered brake barrel has a retail price of £160, but there's no skimping on features. This is a Gatron rifle, the lowest cost in Europe, retailing at the amazing price of £159. For that, 
you get a nice hardwood stock with a rubber hook plate, gold plated trigger, manual safety, open sights with fibre optic inserts with the four sides shrouded to protect against damage. But as you can see, it's also dovetailed for escape. One of the most talked about new air guns of recent times, the Daystate Pulsar, was drawing big crowds. This ultra compact bullpup builds on the British gunmaker's reputation for cutting edge air gun design, taking its electronic super guns to the next level. Seven years in the making, uh, developed from the Wolverine project, amalgamated with the electronics that Daystate have been doing for 11 years and everything is updated. New electronic system using a, a dual slope electronics, all electronics now built into a watertight box. It has a built-in laser built into the fore end, activated off the uh, safety catch. And the safety catch switches the gun on, but the laser will only come on if the gun is actually operational and ready to fire. Anti-double load system into the magazine and bolt open safety so when the bolt's open. Red flashing light to let you know even when the magazine's empty. There's a pressure gauge built in and a display screen on the side of the gun. And the display screen shows all the information you need to know, much like a modern car, which only shows the information that you need, nothing you don't need. So if it's running out of air, it'll come up with low pressure. If it's running out of battery, it'll come up with low battery. The Air Gun Show hopes to bring you a detailed review very soon. That was the Air Gun Show news. Well, that really is blistering accuracy from any air gun, let alone one that retails for just £410. The subject of today's test is the Air Arms S200 Sporter. This air gun is the result of a partnership between Air Arms and Firearm Supremo CZ. With two names like that behind it, this compact and affordable little air gun has a lot to live up to, yet its latest incarnation really doesn't disappoint. Starting with the woodwork, the S200 features a one-piece stock that's a massive improvement on earlier two-piece versions. It's ambidextrous, but it's better than most and doesn't feel like a compromise between a dedicated right or left hander. In fact, it actually serves as a very good handle. And, looking at the figuring on this piece of beach, it's also quite a looker. The butt end has a distinctly target-orientated look to it, that high straight cheek piece giving excellent eye scope alignment. The drop down pistol grip is very comfortable and provides near perfect trigger attack. There's also some neat stippling on there to improve grip. Behind is a very generous cutaway for the thumb and palm. The long fore end provides plenty of contact to accommodate a variety of different holds and its curved finish gives the gun an elegant sporting look. Metal work is finished to the high standard I'd expect from a gun bearing the air arms name. The 485mm match grade barrel is very well blued and I really like the anti-glare finish on the cylinder. There's a muzzle brake on the end of the barrel but being fairly light it's more there for aesthetics. That said it provides a useful synthetic buffer that will prevent the metalwork from getting scratched if you want to use this gun around the confines of farm buildings. The scope mounting rails are a two piece affair and the forward section can be adjusted forwards and backwards along the barrel to accommodate a variety of scope sizes. It's clear of the cylinder so there's no risk of any creep as the cylinder expands and contracts throughout its fill. You'll probably notice that I've got the retrofit magazine on this gun and it's worth bearing in mind that that does stand quite high above the rails which means you can't use particularly low scope mounts when you've got the magazine fitted. And that 10 shot magazine is an extra that retails at £76 and I'd certainly recommend it to anybody that intends using this gun for hunting. In single shot mode it can be a bit of a fiddle to reload but with the magazine in place you've got fast fire action without ever having to fumble for pellets. To remove the magazine ensure that the longest slot is lined up with the top right corner then pull the bolt all the way back. The cassette should then slide out very easily. Load it up and then slide it back in, ensuring that the cutaway is lined up with the internal lug. Then return the bolt and you're ready to shoot. The short, smooth, backward stroke of the bolt 
cocks the gun and cycles the magazine. The forward stroke then probes the pellet home, ready to shoot. That retrofit magazine may not be the most elegant looking, but it indexes flawlessly every time and delivers accuracy on a par with single shot mode. And that accuracy is easy to harness thanks to a very crisp two-stage trigger unit. It's fully adjustable and you can even tweak the position of the blade. Out of the box, this one had a fairly light, short first stage and a very crisp, predictable second stage. I did initially have misgivings about the blade. Firstly, because it's not made from metal, and secondly, because I tend to prefer a wider, flatter blade than the taper on the end of this one. However, I have to concede that it worked brilliantly in practice. This 177 calibre S200 returned just under 50 shots at around 11 foot pounds from 190 bar fill. Air arms say the 2.2 will do about 55, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did more. Now, once your air is running low, all you need to do to fill up is screw off the cap at the front of the removable cylinder and then clip on Air Arm's ultra safe adapter, which features a T bar lockup to hold everything safely in place. You then fill it up either from a diving bottle or a pump, disconnect the adapter, screw the cap back on and you're ready for action. One thing I really like about the filling system is the integral filter on the inlet that prevents any dirt or grit from getting into the gun's innards. It's a pity that there isn't a pressure gauge to help you keep an eye on air levels, but if you've got a magazine fitted, all you need to remember is that in 177 it will comfortably do four full magazines and in 2.2 it'll easily be good for five before it needs refilling. Measuring 92 centimetres and weighing in at just 2.6 kilos unscoped, this is a gun that's going to be comfortably manageable for youngsters and shooters of smaller build. That said, I'm a 14 stone 6 footer and I still found it very comfortable to shoot. So this gun really should appeal to everybody. It's a shame that there's no safety catch, but then many would argue that the only safe gun is an unloaded gun. So, the S200 Sporter really does cover all bases. It's a great introduction to top level air gunning for younger shooters, yet its accuracy and power is bound to be enough to satisfy most adult shooters too. It's certainly accurate enough for HFT use, and it's also rugged enough to withstand the rigors of hunting. All this from an air gun that retails at just over £400 and is still comfortably under £500 if you add that multi-shot magazine. The S200 Sporter really does bring refinement to the affordable end of the PCP market. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.